Being a trusted advisor, this is a huge part of the equation for one plus one equals three. I believe that the Realtor Loan Officer Partnership, when done correctly, can be more than the sum of their parts. And it is fantastic. When you as the loan officer are the trusted advisor to a real estate agent, it means really three things. You're trustworthy, you have the best interests of the realtor at heart, and you're knowledgeable to give great advice. I often say that it is our job to make friends and then to help our friends make good decisions. And being a trusted advisor of taking that to a whole different level. I'm excited to go through this with you guys today. So the three areas that we're going to review today is tools to help your clients, your value proposition, and closed mouth don't get fed. There's a chapter of my book for Kitchen Cookie Leadership. So here's how to be a trusted advisor for your tools to help your clients and your referral partners. These are things that you might be using already, and we're going to talk a little bit about that with working with realtors. Fiverr is a great tool to help realtors do some of these tasks that really could be done by somebody else. One of the things I hear a lot from realtors, I coach both loan officers and real estate agents, is that, oh, I don't have time. I'm caught doing so much of this tasks and items and Minutia, frankly, that could be done by somebody else in the middle of the night in another country. Fiverr is a great tool to be able to submit a project and see what we, people are willing to take as far as compensation for this project. And so it's as low as $5. Um, you can say, hey, is anybody want to do this for $5? And somebody may come back and say, not $5, maybe $10 or $20 or all. It depends on the size of the project and what you're looking to do. Fiverr is a really great task tool to take away some of this detail work that really can be done by somebody else to help realtors get out in front of people. We're supposed to be out doing sales and sales is a contact sport. So Fiverr can help with some of those minutia things that maybe they didn't know even existed. Another tool that's really great for this one plus one equals three is Percy.ai, leveraging artificial intelligence and data to help loan officers and realtors work more closely together. Um, as you can see on the top, there's different uh, tools on with Percy for real estate as well as with mortgage. And winning listings is a big part of this. A lot of loan officers will tell me, oh, I don't want to work with that realtor because they do a lot of listings. Well, become the listing lender. 70% of sellers are also buyers. For you to be involved in securing listings for realtors is huge. Realtors uh, know that listings not only provide them an opportunity to leverage their time, they also provide a literal sign in the ground that says that they're in real estate. Maybe you can ask to get a sign writer with your information for pre-approvals. Uh, there's an opportunity for you to attend open houses, get leads off of the listing itself, and work with them or their buyer team on how to handle the buyers that are coming in for that particular listing. So understanding that listings are the lifeblood for most realtors and understanding how tools like Percy.ai can help them is really adding a whole different resource to your realtor partnership. Also, Mortgage Coach. Mortgage Coach is a great company now actually working together with Sales Boomerang. And this one-two punch is just awesome. And it really is a conversion multiplier. It really helps you provide opportunities of when you and realtors can be contacting your database based on triggers of behavior that is out there, also using some artificial intelligence. Mortgage Coach is such a great tool uh, with a total cost analysis to help people understand the advice and the options that are happening, particularly in a shifting market, that they can really be taking advantage of the market. There are opportunities in every market. It's what is the opportunity for your clients or your realtors. A lot of realtors don't know the tools like Sales Boomerang, Percy, Fiverr, Mortgage Coach that are available to them. And oftentimes loan offers have, have access to training and support on a lot of these tools that realtors do not have. So an opportunity to connect with realtors around the technology tools, if there are needs that the realtor uh, has, it's a great opportunity to share with them your technology tools and access to some other things that you likely have that may I haven't talked about here today. So how to be a trusted advisor, the second part of this is your value proposition, right? So part of it is the elevator pitch. Why would somebody wanna work with you? I get a lot of loan officers that ask me about how they can approach realtors. Uh, and one of the things I always say is that, hey, get to know them. 
call up a realtor and say, hey, I've seen you in the marketplace. We've never done business together. You've been an inspiration to me over the years. I'd love to come meet you and hear your story. I'd like to come interview you and see what I can learn from you. Um, I'm looking to develop some top 10 tips on how to thrive in a shifting market. And I'd love to learn from you on what you've done to be successful over your time through multiple shifting markets. And just get to know people. And then it's based on what they say. We're going to talk about this a little bit later. You can see if you can add some value. Your elevator pitch is, look, I'm looking to get into great relationship with a few exceptional realtors in our area. And so I'm interviewing people to learn about what the best of the best do. And at that time, you can find out if they're interested in being in a partnership and what that might look like. And why work with you? Well, part of it is, is there an energy connection, right? How are you connecting with them, working with them, and having an opportunity to uh, energetically connect? And you're not going to connect with everybody. This is why I say it's our job to make friends. The cool part is you do not have to be friends with everyone. So figure out for you, what's the thing that you love the most? Oh, I love with working first, first time home buyers. I love with working with investors. I love to lead generate. I love to go to networking events. Whatever the things that you love to do about being in the mortgage business, share that with a realtor and then ask them, what do you love most about what you do? Who are your favorite kind of clients to work with and why? And then have a conversation, see if you connect. We've talked a little bit about the tools already. And then your connections. One of the things that's really interesting as a loan officer is think about the number of people you speak to in getting a loan documentation ready. Oftentimes you're, you're talking to the borrower around their, their CPA, their financial advisor, their insurance people. So you're getting a lot of information, a lot of other referral sources during those times and connections. And if you partnered with realtors, you could potentially get all those people get together to mastermind on how to serve the client base at a different level. So think about the connections that you make with every single borrower and create a database of those people and work with your realtors on how to connect with that group as well. So now we're getting to the closed mouth, don't get fed. Um, I wrote a book called Fortune Cookie Leadership. It's written in memory of my mom. Uh, my mom um, passed away uh, almost 25 years ago. And what this is, is a compilation of my mom's one-liners. Uh, she had a habit of parenting and teaching, and she taught at St. Mary's College in Northern California, and would actually give advice with these one-liners. I realized that I have my own one-liners, and my oldest daughter, Kelsey, said that I parent like a fortune cookie, so hence fortune cookie leadership. I wrote this as a, leader for, uh, a leadership gift for leaders. When I was running a, a large real estate office, I did weekly sales meetings and felt like I needed inspiration every week. And if you need an inspirational quote, it's like overwhelming to go and look at motivational quotes. And like, I just wish I had something I could flip through and grab something. So Fortune Cookie Leadership was exactly that format. There's 52 one-liners, some sort of motivation and inspiration, the story of where it originated, and then the lesson for your business or your life. So hopefully uh, it's something that impacts you, and I'm going to share a couple chapters of it today. Closed mouth, don't get fed is a, a lot about this quote from Oprah Winfrey. You get in your life what you have the courage to ask for. Oprah's done okay. So might be some good advice. Um, and the idea is that a lot of people want to support you. They just need to know how. So we need to ask. We absolutely need to ask. So we're going to talk about uh, these five different chapters from the book to really help really put a finer point on becoming a trusted advisor. So closed mouth, don't get fed. Um, this is what a lot of people uh, tell me. They're like, well, I was thinking maybe I could get uh, some more business uh, through open houses. Um, or I am going to um, put a couple of ads on social media and see what happens. Um, and I tend to joke uh, that it's using the hope or the force to get your business um, is not always effective. Hope is not a strategy. Uh, so I want to really have you get focused on asking for support. And what does that actually look like versus just uh, praying, crossing your fingers or using the force to help you get, get, uh, get what you need. And I'm a big, big fan of the force actually. And I'm a big fan of prayer. And I'm a big fan of putting it out there in energy. 
And part of that is a combination of getting really clear on what you want, putting some energy behind it, and energy requires some action. There is some philosophies of ABC, always be closing from Glen Gary, Glen Ross. And I'm not saying that we need to like just be hard closing everyone. There is an opportunity though, and this thing is always be closing. And to me, closing means what is the next step? A lot of times our friends, our family, our past clients, your realtor partners don't necessarily know what the next step is. So closing for the next step can be really, really valuable. So when the next step is actually getting to an appointment, these are the five steps to a great meeting. This is, can be great for recruiting. This is great when you're meeting with a borrower, when you're meeting with the realtor. They're all the same steps. It's these five steps to having a great meeting. The first step is building rapport. So this is the easy part. This is the fun part. I get to just talk. So, hey, tell me your story. What do you love to do? Uh, there's the Ford philosophy, a family occupation, recreation, and dreams. Remember, your job here is to make friends. See what you have in common. See where you maybe could balance each other with different interests. Um, this is a picture of the Cinque Terre in uh, the Italian Riviera. I could talk about Italy all day. I can also talk about baseball all day. Um, and where somebody grew up, where is their family, their extended family, uh, maybe their children, if that's appropriate, um, and just get into finding out what people do. The great question to ask realtors is, how'd you get into real estate? For most people, it's a second, sometimes a third career. And there was something dramatic that may have shifted everything as to why they decided to get into real estate. So it's a great opportunity to learn a little bit about somebody and then tell your story as well. Sometimes I go first when I say, hey, I'd like to tell you a little bit about me and then I'd like to learn a little bit about you. So I do a shorter version of my story to break the ice and then they know the format of what I'm looking to learn about them and can ask some of those questions. Building rapport is actually a huge part of the foundation of building a trusted advisor relationship because you're connecting as people. And actually spend some time in this point. So we're like, oh, nice to meet you. And we got two minutes and then, okay, we're getting right to business. No, connect with people. Look, real estate is a business where it's a contact business, where we're talking and building relationships all the time. We're building relationships inside the industry and you're building relationships with prospective clients and current clients. So it's a great opportunity to get deeper in relationship. This is your opportunity to connect from the heart versus the head and just connect as people and have some fun. The second part is the needs analysis. Um, this is one of those things where I tell people, this is where you're gonna ask a lot of questions and do a lot of listening, right? So this is where you're going to be talking to them a little bit about their business story. After you know about their personal story, say, okay, tell me about your business. What's working, what's not working? Is this the first real estate shifting market you've experienced? Is it your third? market that you've experienced? What have you learned? What have you learned about yourself if it's your first one? Um, and what is your story? What's working? What's not working? Hey, you did you set goals for this year? Did you achieve them? Are you on track? Are you off track? Do you have a way of measuring your goals? A lot of people put goals out that are not measurable and talk to them about, okay, how about we set some measurable goals or having a conversation about what that looks like to have measurable and specific goals. And then I'm going to talk to you about the magic wand question. Actually, I'll do it right now. I thought it was on the next slide. Uh, the magic wand question is actually one of my favorites. Uh, the magic wand question is very simple. You get to grant wishes. If you had a magic wand and could change three things about your business, what would they be? If you had a magic wand and could change three things about your business, what would they be? And then listen and wait and let them talk, let them tell you what those three things are. And it's okay to ask clarifying questions, write them down. Most times realtors will say something in their first or second wish that you know you can help them. You either have a technology tool, you have a process, maybe you personally know how to do something that they are struggling with getting done for their own business and you're like, oh, I wanna help. Let them get all three out. Just ask a couple clarifying questions and just listen. Listen to learn. Help understand. If they say something you don't understand, say, hmm, I'm not familiar with that. Can you, can you educate me? Can you teach me about this? 
listening to learn is such a valuable mindset when you're asking for somebody's wishes or there know that things would be so much easier or better if you had an opportunity to help them in this area. And so wait. So there's an acronym for wait. And it's why am I talking? Uh, some things I write down at the top of my paper when I'm meeting with somebody it says, why am I talking? To make sure to be in that listening mode and that listening to learn mode. Wait is a great acronym to helping you stay focused on what they're saying so that you're really, really hearing and understanding how you can help them. Because that's the next step, solutions. So you're kind of a big deal. So a goal without a plan is just a wish. So this is your opportunity to grant wishes. Yay! Take out your magic wand, uh, your Harry Potter, or fairy godmother, whatever it is, and then present your solution. A lot of times I say, you can say, hey, if I'm able to support you on one or two of these wishes, could I have an opportunity to earn the right to be a business partner with you? Because we know that every realtor you meet probably already has a relationship with somebody else. Of course they do. If you've been in the real estate industry for more than about five minutes, you've met a loan officer. And of course they have other relationships. I did before I did my first transaction. And that's okay that they have a great relationship. Awesome. You're looking to see, could I just start working with you and earn the right to be in the backup position? Because things happen, things change. And so look, I think we might be able to help grant one of your wishes. If I could help you generate more business, for example, uh, and got some additional business come in, could I have an opportunity to work on those clients if I bring you some additional business and what that looks like? And then present your solutions. Hey, this is great tool called Percy, this great tool Fiverr, this great tool Sales Boomerang and Mortgage Coach, whatever tools you have that can provide some value for the realtor is exciting. And so presenting the solution and make sure you're clarifying that these are solutions to the challenges that they're having, to their wishes, so that you get to be the hero. It's kind of fun. The next step is objection handling. Um, ejection handling is awesome. That means they were listening and well, I have this concern or what about this? All they're saying is that if you can help me be comfortable with whatever objection I have, then I'm likely to move forward with you, which means they're pay atten paying attention enough that they want to do business with you. That's exciting. So objections are awesome. So make sure that when you have objections, you know to like, it's just an information gathering and just help me understand what I heard you say is and then confirm it's what they really are, have an objection and then handle it and let them know. And sometimes they're like, hey, I wish your sweater was green. Well, it's pink. So it's OK that sometimes that's not the color they want. And that does that really make a difference if it's a green or pink sweater? And often they're like, no, it really isn't. I just prefer green. OK, well, maybe next time we can talk about green. So the idea is that the, you're going to solve any questions they have. And sometimes it's, that's not something I can change and see how important that is to them. And then the last step is close for next steps. Make sure when you're talking to them about their goals and their business, hey, I want to help you and support you on getting to your goals. And based on what we discussed, the next steps would be, and you can discuss whatever the next step would be for them and for you to work together. If it's just somebody you met, they're uh, maybe not the right person to be in partnership with you. Maybe somebody you interviewed who's a top producing realtor in your area and you learned a ton of information. Um, the next steps might just be, hey, I, I look forward to seeing you in the marketplace. Thank you so much for your time. When I compile a top 10 list, I'm going to send you it first before I publish it out on social media or anything else. So it may be something simple of just a thank you. The next steps are, are just a thank you opportunity. Or the next steps might be doing business together. So see what the next natural step is and then move forward. The idea is that we have to ask. We have to ask for everything. Nobody is a mind reader. Everybody is caught up on their own things, on their own challenges, on their own goals, on their own frustrations. We have to ask for what we need. And it's really important in how we ask for things. Like, hey, I need your support in promoting my business. Could you uh, do a Yelp ad, uh, a Yelp review for me? Could you um, let me know the next time you talk to somebody who is over the age of 65, who hasn't been upstairs in a couple of years because they had hip replacement? Whatever you're looking for, ask for the next step. 
And oftentimes people don't know how they can support you other than cheering you along on the sidelines. They want to know what they can do. So the more specific you are in your ask, the better. When I give out my book, I always tell people, hey, I'd love an Amazon review. That would be awesome. And so people know that, oh, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. And I'm like, that's great. I figure if I don't ask for it, I don't expect somebody to naturally wake up one morning and go, hey, I think I'm going to write an Amazon review for this book. Some people do, which is awesome. I think that it's better when I ask and at least plant it in somebody's head. Our culture is the culture of Superman and Wonder Woman. We uh, have so much cultural energy around being a superhero and flying in to save the day. And people love it. I love it. You love it. It's fun to come in and help somebody, support somebody, be there to cheer them on. Somebody who's first day on the job and you're cheering them on. You're going to do great. It's going to be awesome. It's why we like watching things like the World Cup and the Olympics because you're cheering somebody on to really rise to the occasion. And so why not give that opportunity to your friends, your past clients, to be able to support you, your referral partners, to be able to support you and say, this is what I need. This is what I need from you. Is there something I need to give to you to get what I am asking for today? And it's a great conversation starter. And so asking for what you need in your business for the next step, for opportunities, whatever it is you need to ask and allow other people to be a superhero. We talked about this a little bit as well earlier about sales as a contact sport. And this is the concept of that in order to make friends, you have to be friendly. So connect with people, go make new friends. I, I'll tell people all the time, it's like your inner eight-year-old. When you were eight years old and went on the playground, if you wanted to play hopscotch, you go around and talk to people and say, hey, do you want to play hopscotch? Do you want to play hopscotch? Do you want to play hopscotch? And some people said yes, and some people said no. It wasn't personal. Just didn't feel like playing hopscotch today. That's okay. And so you find the people that want to play hopscotch with you and be friendly and be excited. Hey, I'd love to chat with you about hopscotch. So in the case of getting to know realtor partners, it's like, hey, I'd like to get to know you. I don't know you very well. I've just seen you out in the marketplace. I'd like to learn from you. I am learning this shifting market. Maybe you've been in it before and you're having to relearn it. Maybe you've not experienced a shifting market and you're like, whoa, I need to talk to people that have been through this before, particularly successful realtors and learn from them and be friendly about it. Um, and it's fun, right? It's fun to make new friends. So courage is not the absence of fear. I get that me asking you to walk up to strangers or to call somebody you don't know well or you've just seen the marketplace takes a little bit of courage. And that's great. What an opportunity to flex that muscle. And courage is not the absence of fear. Courage only shows up when there's something a little scary. Courage is the knowledge that something is more important, whether it's your goals, uh, your dreams, getting uh, stronger in your ability to talk to people you don't know well. Uh, courage is not the absence of fear. It's the knowledge that something else is more important. And just like the cowardly lion, you already know how to do it. The cowardly lion knew the whole time how to be courageous. It was just taking that step. So step out a little bit. Learn. We do all of our important growth physically, emotionally, mentally, when we push ourselves just past that point of a little bit of fear. And there's a big difference between fear and danger. It's not dangerous to call somebody you don't know well to schedule an appointment. It's a little scary because of the fear of rejection. Just remember that that inner eight-year-old is there. And just if they want to play hopscotch, great. If they don't, that's okay too. And you'll find somebody who does want to play hopscotch with you. And so it's important to understand that the rejection is not personal and that something else really is more important. For me, I was in corporate sales before getting into real estate and we had a big corporate trip if you hurt and hit certain sales goals and it was to go to Bermuda. So I printed out a picture of Bermuda and had it in my car. So whenever I would get in my car after an appointment, I could decide if I wanted to go do more lead generation or if I just wanted to go home. And the picture of Bermuda reminded me to go maybe do a little bit more lead generation. 
And it was on those days where I was really wanting to go home. I was feeling a little bit drained or even feeling energized because I'd had a great day. Ah, do I really want to do more lead generation? I'd see this picture and I, yes, I do. I really want to go to Bermuda. I want to win this trip and hit these very specific goals. So push myself a little bit more on those days. Now, you can't still second with your foot still on first. So first, I'm asking you to talk to people you don't know well. Two, I'm telling you it requires a little bit of courage. And three, it takes some action. Now, this is my son when he was about eight years old. He's a left-handed pitcher. He currently plays college baseball. And that is Ricky Henderson on the left, the all-time base stealer for Major League Baseball. And yes, they're both wearing athletics gears, which is fun. Um, and it is a little bit of skill and natural ability to steal second base for those of you that are not baseball people. I think you understand that leaving the safety of first base and creating the energy it takes to steal second from a strategic perspective takes some courage and risk and yes, some training. And so it's really interesting that in order to get your team, get your business, get your life to the next phase from first to second base, it's going to take some push. It's going to take some energy. It's going to take that focus. We talked literally before about the idea of the force. This, all right, I am focusing on just getting to second base. I'm going to be safe. I'm going to make it work. I'm providing that energy. That I've, I've done the work. I'm ready. I'm going to go. And paying attention to lots of different things. As a base stealer, somebody who's leaving the safety of first base to go to second, you're going to have to pay attention to other things. You're going to pay attention to the pitcher. You're going to pay attention to the catcher. You're going to also know your own skill set of how fast you are and how skilled you are at moving quickly from first base to second. And sometimes we get comfortable. I know I do. I get comfortable. This is good. All right, I'm fine. 80% of what I want is good. Is it? So pushing yourself that extra mile can actually get you to your goals faster. And here's the cool part. Sometimes you're going to get thrown out. Sometimes you're not going to make it to, to second base. And it's a great opportunity to learn. Hooray, you were not successful. Edison would talk about the how many times he learns not to make the light bulb. So we have an opportunity to improve our skills by paying attention to what worked and what didn't work. And that's awesome. If all we're ever doing is things that works, we're just going to be at the good instead of at the great. And so moving your life to the great. I don't know anybody that wakes up in the morning that says, I hope I have an average day. You want to have a great day. You want to have an exciting day. You want to have a great day. Just, I hope I have an average day. No, go make it great. And what are those things that are going to take a little bit of courage and some energy and focus to get done, to move yourself from good to great? So it is a calculated risk. I totally get that. You, and, and it's really, really important to practice until you get it right. And so having a calculated risk, how are you making friends? How are you approaching realtors? What's working? What's not working? What are you saying? How often are you making calls? How are your meetings going? I know when I first started recruiting in a real estate office, I was really good at getting people to come in for an appointment, though my conversion rate at those meetings was terrible. So the owner of the office where I worked came and sat with me and she said, let's do a role play. And I role played with her how I would recruit with somebody. And I was so excited about all the cool stuff we were doing at our office that I just vomited all the things that we were doing and how exciting it was. And we're doing this and that, and blah, blah, blah. And I scared the heck out of people. And she started laughing at me. She said, whoa, 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 whoa. That's when I got reminded about doing the needs analysis and asking them for what their needs are and then sharing with them a couple of things that I could do to help support them in their business in a recruiting appointment versus vomiting everything there was to know about me and our company and how I could help them because people walked out dazed and confused and what is happening? I just feel like I just got run over by a freight train, which they kind of did. Um, so knowing that my conversion rate was low on my meetings gave me an opportunity to assess my skills. And listen to your coaches. Yes, this is Will Farrell. He did a, a couple a day at uh, Wrigley Field with the Cubs, and he said he's holding up the signs. So in baseball, they use hand signals and signs for stealing uh, different other strategies that happen on on the baseball field. And so his idea was he was holding up the signs 
Um, and I like that you are so handsome. And I just thought that was very funny. Um, the idea is that your coach is from a different perspective. This is the beauty of having a coach. And whether you have me as your coach today, or if you have a different coach that you work with, we get perspective, which is awesome. I personally have a coach. And what I love about my coach is that she will look at my business and what I'm doing and have a point of view that I am not able to see. There's a saying that we are unable to see the picture from inside the frame. Well, duh. How come other people can see these things so clearly? Well, because they have a different perspective. Just like we can see things with other people, like, that's just obvious. Well, it's not obvious to them because they're coming in at it from a different perspective. So follow the signs and the clues and the comments from your coach uh, because they are looking at what is happening in your business differently than how you're experiencing it. And enthusiasm sells. Um, have fun. And I'm not saying you need to be super rah-rah all the time and bells and whistles. I'm just saying there needs to be a certain level of energy and enthusiasm. I'm going to tell you a story about when I was working at the Sharper Image when I was in college, and I was what they called a product demonstrator. I only got sold, got sales when I sold these liquid gel insoles. I don't know if that was the right brand. Uh, I just worked at the Sharper Image, which was a high-end gadget store that was in the mall. And since I only made commission off of the liquid gel insoles, I knew I needed to get people to put them in their shoes to have an experience of wearing these gel insoles. People would put them in their shoes. I had a couple of samples that were open and people would put them in their shoes. And go, Whoa, this feels like wet sand. This is awesome. I love the feeling of wet sand. And they'd go buy a brand new packet. It'd be great. Other people would come in. They put them in their shoes as they'd walk around the store and they'd say, this feels like wet sand. I hate wet sand between my toes. Ugh, these are awful. And they'd take them out and hand them back to me. The thing was, I knew I had to get people to get them in their shoes in order for me to sell anything. So what I would do is I would stand on the edge of the door, and you can see in this picture is a little bit of tile uh, between the edge of the carpet and the mall. And I would stand at that tile and I would say, hey, would you like a free massage for your feet? And people would come in like, what do you mean? I said, well, when you put these in your shoes, it feels like a little massage on your feet because it was the gel moving back and forth on your foot. And so people would laugh and come in and do it. And so my enthusiasm around, hey, would you like a massage on your feet and getting people to come in the door helped drive business. I was in college. Some days, sometimes Sundays, sometimes Tuesdays, I was a little tired when I came into work for no apparent reason that a college student would be tired after a weekend or possibly dehydrated. Um, and my energy level was low. And my ability to stand at the edge of the mall and talk to people was also diminished. And I didn't sell as much. Weird. So the idea is that have some fun. Whatever you get excited about with your business, be genuinely enthusiastic about it. Um, and that it, it's contagious. Happy salespeople sell more stuff. Love what you do. And if you are super, super analytic and you're like, I would never, can't even imagine standing at the edge of a mall and asking complete strangers to come in and try on gel insoles, that's fine. If you're super analytic and you love to sit down and hammer the numbers and help people make really good financial decisions around their largest financial asset of their life, which is their home, help them understand the value of investing in real estate, that's awesome. And if you are genuinely enthusiastic about that, and that is a passion for you, make sure you're telling people about it. Tell your real, your referral partners, your realtors, that this is something that's super, super important for you. This is how you make friends. I have a lot of friends of mine that are super analytic because I am not. And so I like to have them around me so that we can share ideas and solve problems because they have a different perspective, a different seat on the butt. So creating an opportunity to be enthusiastic. Maybe you're going to put on an investor seminar and talk about the financial piece of it. Maybe you're somebody who likes to do parties. Create an opportunity to have a party. It could be whatever. It could be a World Cup party. It could be a Valentine's Day party. It could be an Easter party. It could be a thank goodness it's Thursday party. It doesn't matter to me. It's got to matter to you and what you get to share your enthusiasm with others. 
This is actually a picture of a realtor at an open house. Uh, my friend and I were at an open house. I was actually looking for a property in this area. And this realtor, who I'm sure is amazing and fantastic at her work, uh, when I walked in or we walked into the open house, she said, was on the phone and she's like, hey, I got to go now um, and hang up the phone and just sat there. Her energy was extremely low and I'm sure she's a brilliant realtor. The idea was that her enthusiasm was low. It was not like this, where the enthusiasm was excited and crazy.